quick before we jump into this video you guys have seen the ultimate fun that we have had on our pit bikes and if you guys know these things are dang near impossible to get all around the country well we wanted to be able to give back to you guys so Every $5 spent at WorkForApparel.com for the next month is going to enter you to win this beautiful 2021 CRF 110. Don't miss out on this, guys. This thing is a blank slate to do whatever you want with. Zero hours, brand new bike that I've been hiding for a long time waiting for this day. So we want to be able to give back to you guys. We appreciate all you guys that watch the channel and support WorkForApparel.com. So head on over to the website. There'll be a link right there as well as one down in the description. Let's roll this video. What's up and good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video. Hello, peacocks. Hello. So today I got something really exciting. Um, I don't know if this is gonna be the most exciting video or not, but this is exciting for me. And I've told you guys in the past, um, kind of with this YouTube channel thing, I'm honestly just living out all my childhood dreams and filming it, and hopefully you guys are enjoying watching that. And well, today is no exception. Hello goats, how you guys doing? I like how you hang out in the stalls with the gates open, even though there's no reason to, and you don't need to be in there, but aren't you two the cutest goats? So I know I uh, show some equipment operating on the channel, and no, I'm not like, the giant equipment operator, but I think I'm I think I'm pretty decent at what I do. And then obviously you guys saw when I bought the Mini X and how that just kind of opened up a whole new world of work that I could do. And you've also seen my awesome neighbor James's vast collection of some pretty rad equipment. And well, we're gonna have to credit today's video to James. He called me up yesterday and he's like, hey, I got a proposition for you. And I said, what? Not a bad thing, but thinking it was gonna be like, I trade you X for X. But no, James is like, hey bud, so uh, I got a dozer at my house that I'm not gonna be using tomorrow. You want it? You're darn right I do. And I woke up this morning and I hadn't really heard from James and I'm like, oh, I don't wanna bug him about it. But then I'm like, you know what? If I know James, like I know James, it's probably already here. And well, it's already here. And sketchily parked on top of our step up. <laughs> Holy lake though, look at the lake we got going on down here. We definitely need to work on some drainage on the track over here at Rhino Ranch, but look at that bad boy. This thing is like Gucci'd out too, look at it. Windows are all tinted out. It's got the, uh, I don't know, the forestry package, I think is what it's called, or whatever. You get the little bars in the front there to protect the cab. This thing is rad. I've never touched a dozer. I have never, never operated one, never touched one. So this should be an interesting day and an interesting video of learning out how to operate that thing. And the one thing about anything on tracks is the second you go over like a hill or like you're cresting a hill, it gets real weird and tippy. So <laughs> thanks James for, uh, Forcing me to back off this thing right when I'm learning how to use it. That's gonna be interesting. Y'all gonna watch me panic for a second. I guess first things first is, uh, figure out how to climb up here without falling off the side of the step up. Here we go. Uh, oh jeez, oh, that's soft. Oh, and that's a shoe full of dirt. So we got us the D5K2XL. Always gotta go XL. Let's see what she's like in here. Ooh, this tint is nice. I know a lot of you guys, oh jeez tracks are slippery. I know a lot of you guys have been saying I need to tint the Mini X. I would love to for the daytime stuff, but I uh, I use it a lot at night and I don't want it to be a pain in the butt to see. I'm going to switch over to GoPro here so we got a little bit wider field of view, but let's get up in this thing. Let's see what we got. Oh, it even comes with a Milwaukee tape measure. I'm a big Milwaukee fan. I bought one Milwaukee tape measure in my life and within a week, the entire hook just ripped right off of it. Stanley Fat Max for life. All right, let's get her closed up here. I've honestly never even sat in a dozer. This is pretty rad. You definitely don't have a whole lot of view out the front window there, especially with the exhaust going right up there. And I guess technically you, there ain't a whole lot you're gonna see there. You're trying to watch your blades, I'm assuming from both sides here, but awesome views on the two side windows or the doors, I should say. We got all of our switches up here. Oh shoot, somebody done stole the radio. What do we got going over here? We got our parking brake. Oh, we got eco mode. Boom. This thing is eco friendly. We got our, our ripper there, I'm assuming. Traction control auto. That's kind of cool. Uh, don't really know what that does. Looks like it's something hydraulic lock, something. I don't know. We got 10 different windshield wipers here. Then on this side, we got our HVAC controls. What do we got in here? Uh, trash. This thing's actually got a ton of room in it. So, again, never operated a dozer. I have a, no idea what I'm doing. We're gonna find this out the hard way. But what's in here, what's in here? Okay, I don't know. Oh, maybe that's for a radio or that's the radio block plate maybe. We're gonna leave that in there. That's where I could put all my snacks. All right, let's get this thing fired up here. Oh, we'll turn the air off. We don't need that right now. All right, let's see if she fires up. Ooh. She's actually really, really quiet. Look at it, it even tells you your slope that you're on right now. Guess I didn't build this here step up perfectly flat. Now I've been dying to get a dozer out here for quite some time because you guys can see all the dead 
brush and trees and everything from the fire. All of that is not only horrible to look at, but it's dangerous. If you're driving through there, riding through there, like this stuff is sharp and no fun to get hit with. So I've been wanting to clear that entire side of my property. Now we're looking at tons and tons of acres over there. I don't know if that's gonna happen today, but I think uh, we're gonna get a heck of a start. All right, I'm assuming one of these sides is to drive and one of these has gotta be the blade. All right, well, I'm gonna guess that's drive. All right, so there's reverse, forward, and I'm assuming your throttle pedal right there makes you go. So that would mean this side is the blade. Maybe? Oh, hold on. Maybe we take the parking brake off. And the hydraulic lock off, maybe? Oh, there we go, there we go, okay. So there's our blade controls. I think we can go side to side. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah! Back down, back up. All right. Oh, 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 and we can go side to side that way with our little wheel right there. I don't know what these buttons do, so we're not gonna touch those. All right, we're gonna raise our blade up here. I'm assuming there's no brake. So what happens if we put it in reverse? Oh, she's, she's rolling. Let's see, give us some throttle. Okay, that, that, that's not how that works. <laughs> right, we're gonna take her out of gear. <laughs> This is a learning process, guys. It's a learning process. We're gonna get this figured out though. Maybe we need a little more throttle. Click the throttle up there. Oh, 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 okay, okay. A little throttle goes a long way. Maybe this is the clutch slash brake. There it is. All right, we got this now. That's the clutch slash brake. Oh, and we're backing up. Oh, man. Oh, I can already feel we're teetering on this. I feel like we need a camera outside for this. Here goes nothing. We're going down, we're going down. All right, let's go head over to uh, some of these trees and See what kind of pushing power we can get into. We also haven't really turned yet. I'm assuming we just, oh, dude. All you old dozer operators are probably like rolling in your graves when you see how easy things are nowadays with the two sticks. Going forward now. Let's see, Let's see if we throttle her up. Let's see if we're in eco mode, you know? Eco-friendly around here. Oh, this thing, this thing keeps going. And we're not even, this is like, not quite three quarter throttle. I'm loving this. Absolutely loving this. We're either gonna do some cool stuff today or we're gonna destroy my yard. Either one, I'm okay with as long as we have fun. All right, y'all, let's go see if we can push over some trees. Going for this big one right here in front of us. Hopefully that's a good camera angle. I don't really know. Get out of our way. Whoa, it's like nothing. So I found out what one of these buttons does, which is, so you can see now we're angling the blade that way with these two buttons. Whoa. Whoa, that's a, that's a wiggle button. Is that really what that button's for? Just to, to vibrate the, the blade? That's kind of cool. I feel like there's some other function for that, but that's, that's pretty rad. What's this one do? All right, we don't know what that one does. Oh, we got the horn. And we don't really know what that does. Look at it just demolish this whole root ball right here. Oh, push it over. Look how nice and clean we are behind us here. I am so excited to clear this area, guys. It's gonna take me a minute to figure this out, like do it properly, and like I said, not dig big old holes and make a mess, but I think we're gonna be able to do pretty good here.
we'll say. Um, I think we're starting to get a little bit of the hang of it. You can see this. Some of these little root balls, they just go so deep. Um, I'm sure if I was just like digging in deep and pushing a ton of dirt, it would be no problem. But I'm basically just trying to skim the surface. You can see we haven't really dug down much um, where we're in the dirt area versus the area that is untouched over there. I don't want to move a ton, a ton of dirt. I just want to skim the surface, get rid of all this dead brush and trees. And uh, which makes it a little bit of a challenge because you can see how the grade kind of rolls. And then depending on where you're at, sometimes you gotta roll this way, sometimes you gotta roll that way. So you're constantly adjusting the angle of the blade. That way one side doesn't dig in super deep. So to anybody that can cut grade by eye, I commend you guys for doing that for a living. But it takes some getting used to, that's for sure. Also guys, I have figured out what this wheel does. This is your speed. So you can see when I shift the wheel, it adjusts right there, our speed. If we kick it right, we'll speed up here. And then we can slow back down. That's good to know, because I'm sitting here being like, dude, I'm in literally one tick up on the power. And this thing's fast, like you gotta make adjustments quick. I don't know how people are going full throttle. This thing's gotta go like 20 miles an hour. Obviously over exaggerated. I doubt this thing goes 20 miles an hour, but good to know. You can adjust your speed while keeping the same power. Let's see what kind of speed we can get up to here. This bad boy's choochin'. All right, we'll slow that back down. Now, the cool thing is you can be independent. So if you want to back up faster than you're going forward, um, which is perfect for what I'm doing because obviously I'm pushing forward, then I'm backing up to get another bite to push forward again because I want all the brush and dirt and stuff to be on that side. I could have my reverse speed really fast um, because obviously I'm not being precise at that point and then slow down my forward speed so I actually have time to kind of compensate. So you'll see as we're going through and pushing, I have to constantly keep adjusting the blade here that way up and down like you're, you're constantly playing with this and even though you've got great sight lines on the sides you don't have like the best view up there so again shout out to people that do this for a living it's not easy <laughs> challenges I mean some of these bigger tree balls that I've been running into uh, you've got to like get the speed up and really kind of give it a good ram to get it over we're currently in a big vein of rocks you can see some of the rocks over there on the ground um, there's some bigger ones up in here there's like a whole vein that runs through here of rock you can see all the lighter spots right there in the dirt and you, you got to give it a good push and this thing sometimes will just sit there and spin its tracks I think I'm kind of starting to get the hang of this bad boy here now obviously I'm not trying to like cut any grades to spec or anything like that I'm just clearing the ground but I think we're getting in a little groove now um, kind of seeing what it can and cannot push I think I figured my speeds out I'm about a 1.8 on the forward there and a 2.0 on the reverse don't know if that's miles an hour maybe that is it's got a little gear next to it maybe that's something with the gear reduction couldn't really tell you 
The donkeys look super happy. Look at, look at, look at. All the animals here love anytime you turn up new dirt. I'm hoping this will encourage a bunch of new growth for them too, so that way they uh, they have some new stuff to eat. I will say the only downfall to this machine is I don't know what a good angle is to film from inside the cab for you guys to see what's going on. Right now we're pushing through some of the uh, the thicker trees and stuff that I tore down earlier, kind of putting a pile over here. There's also a decent amount of rocks in here, so you'll see it'll get a little bit sluggish as we start to build up a load on the blade. But eventually she ends up pushing through. Whoa, 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 whoa. We, we hit something. And it literally, like the root ball, kicked us sideways. That's how strong trees are. impressive progress you guys can see I mean this whole area is just completely stripped now now and it just doesn't look like sad and death like all this burnt out stuff does I know there's some like green weeds and stuff growing at the bottom there but but it's always looked like a creepy dead forest since the fire came through here and I'm just super stoked to see this because that means we're gonna be getting new life new growth is gonna come out here fresh green one thing I've noticed with the dozer though um, especially with these trees, and we're just fighting giant root balls in the ground. You can see I'm kind of just pushing in rows, then I back up, then I push in a row, because I'm trying to get everything up to the hillside up there. And with a lot of these trees and stuff, even like stuff this size, which isn't very big, you can't just start back there, get a whole push all the way through, and expect it to push through it. So kind of what I'm having to do here is I'm having to come in and like pull these sections down first, then go back there and go for my push. One thing we haven't played around with much yet is the, uh, the rippers, which are on the back there. So this is how we actuate them down. So if we go, if we hit down on here, you can see them go down back there. We'll see if these will rip up some of the roots because you can see in front of me, even though we're skimming the surface, there's still a lot of root balls down in the ground. Check this out, so when you shut it off, it goes through a DEF purge. DEF purge active. Do not disconnect battery power. Gotta love diesel exhaust fluid. I gotta say, y'all, we did a pretty good amount of work today. I honestly think like another day or two and I could strip this entire side of all the burnt stuff and get it back to this beautiful wet dirt look. I absolutely love this look. I know stuff's gonna grow back in over top of this, but this is honestly my favorite look. Like just seeing the amount of usable space. I mean, keep in mind the property goes way back up over there, continues over there, you can see the fence up there. Now I'm seeing my dreams coming true on like just the usefulness of this property. We're running a little bit low on diesel. I think I'm gonna do one pass just around the track to clear any of these uh, brush and trees out of here. Then we're gonna take this bad boy back over to James's. Um, hopefully we got enough diesel to make it back. All right, change of plans, y'all. We got the fuel light on. We better get this thing back. This thing gets a little loud and violent when you're really sending it. We'll get her back in place here. Next to this sweet little roller. Put our blade down. 
get our DEF purge going. Now, I haven't been in a ton of cat equipment, but I feel like I've been in my share. And it seems like cat loves to put strange handles to exit their um, vehicles. On the skid series of James have, it's like this big slap latch that you have to like slap to pop open. This thing, I don't, I don't know what they're thinking with these little boogers here, but very, very strange door latch there. We could have had something to come out here, like a lever, but they go for the, the, the little barrette. And again, I got to give a huge thank you to James for letting me borrow the dozer today. Um, Dan, I hit the neighbor lottery is a, a complete understatement. Um, I definitely, definitely lucked out living on the street that I live on, having James as a neighbor. Can we just take a moment to appreciate, wait for it, wait for it, just how much nicer and cleaner that looks now that all the burnt stuff is completely gone. Now we're going to head down to the shop and give you guys an update on the gray OBS. So we'll see you guys when we get to the shop. Come on, Chris wants to jump rope. Hey. Which way are we going? Which way are we going? This way. Okay. Right on this yeah. What? No. Okay, go. Y'all go too slow. Oh, no. Oh, you almost stopped. Oh. <laughs> it's like my, my, my workout circle's done two over. Look at this, guys. I haven't seen these parts in a long time. If you guys remember, Banks sent us out an intercooler set with all the beautiful piping that we had done over at Swift Powder Coating. This color is so rad and gonna look so good with the gray on the OBS there. So is that the uh, intercooler <laughs> set block there? Yeah, it's the, the make it straighter. Oh, okay. All right, meanwhile on uh, this side of the shop, so we got the, the GM side and we got the Ford side. On the GM side, we got a... Uh, Derek just loves taking this thing apart, so... so every time we change something, I gotta change everything else that I've already changed. So anyways, let's go take a look at this hood, buddy. Now that this thing's uh, is it all fitted up. Ooh, looking good, looking good, buddy. Look at this, guys. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Oh, you actually got the back to go on the, it, the hinge? We actually got rid of the rear hood pins just because, God forbid something happens to this motor, there's a fire or something electrical going on, and like I'm the only one driving, this hood it wouldn't be, like, I wouldn't be able to get it off. And like that doesn't sit well with me. It's like I need to be able to get this off. And you just saw I was able to just hop, hop, lift, get the stick, and prop it up. I actually like that a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I wish that. Why'd you hit the stick? <laughs> I wish that was recording. <laughs> Zach, let me know when you need your wrench, okay, buddy? Okay. I got you. What are you doing? Flatbed got its first bend. <laughs> you hit the flatbed. How do you hit the flatbed? I choked up a little too much and missed. I was swinging this way and I skipped and went. Jeez, guy. It's a good thing we got you ready for this the other day with some, with some concrete. Why don't you just cut it all the way off? Because you either go shallow and knock the welds and crack them, or you go too deep and you start cutting too much into your axle tube. I don't want to cut in my axle tube, so I go shallow. Two idiots garage, don't do this kind of shit. No. Yeah, we're, we're better than this. What are the odds you're gonna miss and hit right into your rotor? I'm trying to get it out of the way. That's a weird angle. Quiet on set, please, quiet, quiet on set. All right, Zach, tell us about this awesome intercooler setup we got going on here from Banks. It, it cools in the middle. What's the intercooler do? It cools a intake charge temp, or, a, sorry. Let's start over. <laughs> all right, all right, we got this, hurry here. Ready? Right. Zach, what's an intercooler do? It uh, cools the air in between the turbo and the motor. That's important. Yeah, it does. It I'm gonna let Zach tell you why. So, right now, if you see here, the turbo's in the back, this little black Y is, into the intake. That's fine for low boost, low RPM, but when you start adding fuel or work in the truck, when you compress air, it creates heat. That's why compressors get hot. So the newer trucks all have some sort of intercooler, whether it be air to air like this is, or air to water like the six sevens, um, there's chiller boxes, you know, you put ice in them. So the, the whole point behind it is to cool the air before it goes into the motor, therefore you're not running hot air into a hot motor and increasing uh, EGT. So that's basically the whole point of cooling the air. Get a colder charge, the cooler the charge, and the more, you know, the cooler the charge, the more air you can pump in. So 10 pounds of cold air is a lot more dense than 10 pounds of hot. So yeah, you want as cold as you can get, you know, for whatever boost range you're running. We're going for a lot of horse torques here. So like that's why you'll see if, if anybody watches, you know, the big drag guys that run turbo cars, they have chiller boxes, which they open the lid, dump a bag of ice in it, and then the air pumps through that. So it's, you know, 32 degrees or below 32 degrees coming into there at 10 pounds. So it's forcing twice as much air, you know, don't quote me on that, but basically you get, you get more air into the motor for the given 
pound rating. So obviously, um, Zach's done some cutting here to get the Banks intercooler to fit. So you have to take the whole front of the truck off. <laughs> Bracket kit's pretty simple. Uh, they use utilized stock holes, so you know there's really no drilling. But Looks like the. Uh, it's got a huge. Very manual. very well in depth uh, instructions yeah, here. Yeah, and it, it's you know basically, you read the pictures, but you got you know certain things you have to read through, especially if you've never taken one of these apart. They go through where the bolts are to pull the bezels out. I like that, many, I appreciate How many that. bolts are in this, so you're not you know, bending your metal or you know, breaking anything. Ever seen a lot of Dedex parts that show up without like any trace of instructions? It's always nice to have a company like Banks that really puts the effort in for the instructions because again, like the reason I've held off on this is because there's so much cutting involved that I was like scared to even, I know I sure as heck wasn't gonna do it. Um, Banks was actually gonna do this up at their shop and then the Rona hit and well, here we are. Well, y'all, just wanted to kind of end the video, give you guys an update on everything going on here in the shop. So with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfordapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to. Every like motivates me to keep going. Day in and day out, every day. Bye, Zach. Every day, just, you know, keeps, keeps me there. So give that little like and uh, yeah, I'll keep doing this. What, what do they do if they want something in this life? You gotta work for it. Okay. Also, you gotta be willing to go to workfortapparel.com and get all your work for apparel needs and apparel. Not these boots. I mean, for the right price. Is the video over? Yeah. Oh, roll the outro. <laughs> Damn. Uh. Yeah. Yeah.